Loving Father, we thank you for your words of promise. May we hold to those words of promise in these dark days. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Please do be seated. <clears throat> Some of us may remember a song by the Doors, which began with the lyrics, Strange days have found us. Strange days have tracked us down. Strange days have indeed found us. Although we knew that these days would find us, we never really thought that it would be now. Perhaps it's simply denial. But we can so easily fall into a believing that as a person lives into their 90s, they will live forever. To me, who was born in September 1952, and so have known no other monarch, it seemed that Queen Elizabeth would always be, and this, would, and, this, and this time would never come to an end. Of course, our reality is not like that. Our earthly lives are finite. Consequently, we find ourselves in these strange days, in these days of national mourning. And no doubt we have all watched, listened to, and read many tributes to Her Majesty the late Queen Elizabeth II. And we are probably now working our way once again through the series The Crown. So I'll not add my contribution to them this morning. I will, however, encourage you if you haven't already done so, to listen to the Radio 4 programme, The Queen Remembered. It's an excellent and honest telling of Queen Elizabeth's life. Strange days have found us. Strange days found the young Princess Elizabeth at the age of just 10, when the unprecedented happened and her uncle abdicated thereby casting her unexpectedly to be the next in line to the throne. Strange days found her again in February 1952, when at the age of but 25, her father died at the age of only 56, and the crown passed to her. Elizabeth never expected to be queen, she never sought this role, yet it was to be hers. As a person with deep faith, expressed through and within the Church of England, I believe that she felt that this role was her calling. It may be that these words of Jesus best express her understanding of her role as queen. I have come not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. Whether you support the institution of the monarch, or disagree with it, or are indifferent to it, I believe that it was with this understanding that Elizabeth committed to the role into which she found herself unexpectedly and somewhat against her desires. To be queen was what, what, was what God was asking her to be. I have no doubt that, despite the many advantages, the role of queen was also very demanding. This calling that she felt was, no doubt, not always an easy burden to carry. Doubtless, there would have been many times when she thoroughly enjoyed being Queen Elizabeth, Times when this calling brought her deep satisfaction. Times when this calling brought a deep sense of fulfillment. I also suspect that there are times when this calling brought great challenges. Times when she struggled with what she knew she ought to do, but felt like doing the opposite. Times when she was simply weary and longed to be simply Elizabeth. But thankfully, 
she stood by her calling, and in that alone, she stands as a marvellous example to us all. Now, we may not be called to high-profile roles, but we are all called to take up these words of Jesus. I have come not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. We are called to do not my will, but God's will. Answering and being obedient to that call will bring moments of great joy, moments of deep satisfaction, moments which bring a deep sense of fulfillment. Answering and being obedient to that call will also bring difficult and challenging times, times when our will conflicts with God's, time when we feel inadequate, times we are simply weary. The seemingly simple challenge of knowing God's will is within God's, what God's will is within any given situation is seldom easy. We are tragically children of this world as well as children of God. Yet it is not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me, that we are to strive to do. And that doing of God's will may often be in seemingly small ways, ways we may consider trivial, insignificant, and are often unnoticed, even by us. Taking a few moments to chat with a neighbour. Put it to one side what we want to do and instead giving our time to a member of our family or our church. Supporting someone through a time of ill health or bereavement. As I believe Queen Elizabeth II understood for herself, we are called not to do my will but to do the will of him who sent me. And when we feel weary of the struggle, weary of the struggle to set aside our will and to do God's will, we can take strength from these beautiful words from Lamentations. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. In these strange days that have found us, we can take quiet moments to thank, to thank Queen Elizabeth II for a wonderful example of holding firm to our calling to do God's will. Remembering that he will show compassion, so great is his unfailing love. <laughs>